This study deals with voice activity detection for transient noisy environments based on diffusion nets architecture. This study was conducted by myself, Amir Ivry, Dr. Baruch Berdugo, and Professor Israel Cohen, all from the Technion Israel Institute of Technology. I would like to show you a 30 second long example that contains speech, transients, and stationary noises in order to convey the challenge that lies ahead. Now we can explicitly explain the challenge according to what you just saw. The challenge lies in the non-stationary noises, namely the transients. The transients rapidly vary over time. They have high energetic values that are translated to very uh, prominent acoustic signatures, and they may scream speech utterances. Therefore, when, transient, when transients are present, it is harder to locate speech signals that are hidden underneath them. In terms of performance measures, we want to reduce the false negative rate. Meaning, if in a given frame there are samples of speech and samples of transients that are most likely screening the speech, we would still like the algorithm to determine that speech is present. If not, and if we fail to do so, we may delete important aspects in terms of information. If you wish to formulate the problem, first we would uh, decompose the signal that arrives at the microphone to its three components. The speech signal, the transients, and the stationary signal. To process this signal that is received in the microphone, we scan it with time frames of 32 milliseconds with 50% overlap. That way, we receive an N size data set where each frame in this data set has length of 32 milliseconds. Then we can use, in the training phase of course, the clean speech signal in order to determine where speech is present and speech is absent. And then we can define more clearly that the goal of this study is to correctly estimate in each time frame if speech is present or if speech is absent. The toolbox that are in our disposal are comprised of features and deep learning architectures. Let's start with the features. The first feature is a spectral, spectral representation of the time domain signals, and it is a, the male frequency sepster coefficients that are essentially a filter band representation of the data. In this study, we also weight each MFCC that is derived in each time frame individually according to the likelihood of noise present in that frame. We use past context and we concatenate each time frame representation to two adjacent past time frames. In total, we have 72 elements in spectral representation for each given time frame. Then we move to the next feature, which is the diffusion maps. Diffusion maps in this study performs nonlinear dimensionality reduction and reduces the 72 dimensional MFCC representation to a dimension of three by performing nonlinear dimensionality reduction. In essence, this method tries to grasp the intrinsic structures in the MFCC across time and then to characterize them and express them 
as a low dimensional manifold. The algorithm to diffusion maps is not as familiar, uh, but it is quite simple, so I will explain it shortly here. Let us look at the high dimensional data set. Each vector is size n equals 72, and we have n such vectors in the high dimension, as much as time frames. We take this high dimensional data and we construct an affinity matrix according to non linear modification of the Euclidean distance between each pair of high dimensional vectors, then to use it uh, more efficiently, we normalize this affinity matrix to be a probability transition matrix, which expresses essentially a Markov process over the high dimensional data set. Then we perform eigenvalue decomposition process on this transition probability matrix to generate the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this process, which ultimately are the values we use in order to derive the diffusion maps coordinates. Notice, notice that for each high dimensional xi vector, there is a corresponding three dimensional embedding that is generated by the diffusion map process from top to bottom. Let us talk about the deep learning architecture. We use exclusively in the, in, in, with the encoder decoder architecture that tries to encode efficiently the input and reduce noises and then decode the clean version of the input to the output therefore performing encoding and decoding from the encoder to the decoder. To give a more practical example that relates to our research, we look at the left side of the screen and we can see two MFCC representations. The top one is of non-speech utterances and the bottom one is of speech utterances. On the left side, we can see the corresponding diffusion map embeddings in three dimensions of each of the categories. In red, we can see the non-speech diffusion maps embedding. And in blue, we can see a distinguished structure that is of the speech-related signals. We use that and use the encoder-decoder architectures to train two distinguished neural networks. The top neural network tries to learn the relation between the MFCC features and the diffusion maps coordinates by feeding the entrance of the network with the MFCC and constraining the middle of the network, meaning the encoder, to be equal to the diffusion map embeddings. It is done independently, but similarly, with non-speech utterances down below. And from this process, we get two networks. One knows the, the relation between speech MFCC to diffusion map embedding of speech. And the other one knows the relation between non-speech MFCCs and the corresponding diffusion maps embedding. How we do that exactly? constraining the diffusion maps into the middle layer. Well, we take a look at the term from which we derive the eigenvalue decomposition values from, and it is essentially reduced to solving this equation for a vector O, or for a matrix O in, that specific, in this specific equation. Namely, if we force the middle layer of the architecture to coincide and hold this equation, then we can simply turn it into a regularization term and add it to the training process. Then after we have two trained networks that know the relation between their corresponding MFCC to the diffusion maps, we can feed the uh, simultaneously to both networks an unknown data of MFCC 
and see the error between each prediction and the input. From this error, we receive an error map that is termed error map in this study. And on this error map, we can simply apply a linear SVM, for example, to distinguish speech from non-speech frames. When unknown data is fed to the network, we already know the learned SVM classifier, and what is left is to propagate this example through the networks, derive the errors between the predictions and the input, and map it on the error map, and apply the SVM classifier to distinguish it. I would like to uh, address the performance of the system. We can see here that 98.1% accuracy was derived by using 6,000 frames of speech and 6,000 frames of non-speech frames. We can see that the error map showed high robustness since most of the examples here are far away from the margins. And we have a set of interesting experiments. In this experiment, it can be shown that even if the training set is imbalanced or is partial in terms of its quantity relative to 100%, it still does not impair or compromise the performance significantly. Moreover, we can compare our method to competing methods, the one of Dov and Ariav. We can see that their performance benchmark-wise is degraded relative to ours, but we propose to show yet another experiment in which we implement the concepts that are used in our research into the architectures of Dov and Ariav and show that these core algorithms can, in fact, significantly improve competing methods and thus enforcing the point made that diffusion maps can capture intrinsic structures of speech and separate them from non-speech timeframes in an efficient manner, regardless of the specific architecture used. However, our method is still better than the competing ones, even with that alternation. I would like to show a final example of our voice activity detection performance and conclude. Sandra Finn. Thank you very much and have a great conference.